Now this midday, a jailer in Delaware County is on administrative leave after some controversial video surfaced of him holding a man at gunpoint. This happened yesterday near Tiltson Avenue and Goodman Avenue in Muncie. Police say the man on the ground was checking to see whether car doors were locked in the neighborhood, but officers later released this man saying there was no evidence he committed a crime. The jailer was identified as Jerry Shaner. Today, Delaware County Sheriff's Office released this statement saying they are committed to upholding the public's trust as well as requiring the highest level of professionalism from their personnel. Also new this midday, a woman convicted of beating an elderly woman is back in prison again. Jessica Vasquez was sentenced to 20 years in prison back in 2008, but the Department of Correction let her out on parole less than halfway through her sentence. Months later, Vasquez was arrested for drunk driving. The Department of Correction considered that a parole violation and sent her back to prison where she'll spend the next five years. Vasquez was convicted in 2008 for beating Evelyn and Page, who was 81 years at the time. Well, Keystone Avenue and I-65 on the south side was closed for a few hours this morning after a diesel spill. It happened on Keystone at the traffic light near the I-65 south on and off ramps. Investigators say the saddle tank on a semi leaked about 50 gallons of diesel fuel onto the roadway. Several cars and trucks drove right through it, leading to an even bigger cleanup. Crews had to close off the on and off ramp to I-65 along with Keystone Avenue while they soaked up that mess. We're less than two months from the new legislative session, and today we're hearing Governor Holcomb's priorities for lawmakers for the very first time. The governor says he's focusing on workforce development and combating the drug epidemic. His agency, can, uh, his, his agency includes improving broadband access and connecting adults, including those in prison, to job training. He says the state needs to increase the number of drug treatment facilities by 10 and work with coroners to develop a system of better reporting drug overdose deaths. Democrats are claiming victory in multiple states after sweeping a majority of last night's local elections. One of the biggest wins came in a race for governor that some saw as a referendum on President Trump's agenda. ABC's Janae Norman has more. A big night for Democrats claiming gubernatorial victories in New Jersey and Virginia. Virginia has told us to end the divisiveness that we will not condone hatred and bigotry. Virginia was the only southern state President Trump didn't win last November. This year, the race in that swing state turned nasty. For Ugly political ads and focused and on hot button topics like Confederate monuments, race relations, run, run, run. and illegal immigration. With your help, Ed Gillespie will help make America great again. Despite President Trump backing former RNC chairman Ed Gillespie, the current lieutenant governor, Ralph Northam, who was backed by former President Obama, won by nearly double digits. Trump quick to distance himself following Gillespie's loss, tweeting, Ed Gillespie worked hard, but did not embrace me or what I stand for. In New Jersey, Governor Chris Christie's unpopularity led to voters choosing Democrat Phil Murphy over Kim Guadagno, Christie's lieutenant governor. And the night not just big for Democrats, but a big night for diversity and inclusion, which ABC News political analyst Matthew Dowd says sends a clear message to the president. Not only a first transgender uh, person elected in a, in, to office in Virginia, the first Sikh elected to office in a major city. I mean, it was a night of total diversity, and I think that not only a rejection of Trump, it was basically a rejection of what he stood for. And Virginia is seen as a bellwether for national politics. In exit polls, 30% of voters said they came out to show opposition to the president, which analysts say is a positive sign of intensity for Democrats and a worrying one for Republicans. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. Thanksgiving is just over two weeks away, and today the organizers of the Moselle Sanders Dinner are looking to the public for help. RTV6's Julie Persley is live on the West Side with details on how you can help out. Julie. 
Well, good afternoon, Beth. They are hoping everybody will reach out and dig into their pockets a little bit. The Radiothon will start this weekend. At this point, they say they have plans to feed more than 40,000 people here in the Indianapolis area on Thanksgiving Day. Again, this was a tradition started back in the mid-1970s by Moselle Sanders. His son, Roosevelt Sanders, continued it. This year, it will take about $86,000 to feed those 40,000 thousand people around the area at this point they still need fifty thousand dollars that is why they're going to hold the radiothon coming up this weekend again that is going to be held at two different locations it is going to go on at castleton square mall and also at circle center mall you will also be able to donate online and by being able to call in those will be going on friday and saturday from 10 a.m to 9 p.m and again the foundation Foundation said it cannot do this without people like you, people around central Indiana who have stepped up for so many years. There is going to be a change this year. They're asking people if you need a meal on Thanksgiving Day, they're going to have a cutoff, which will be Friday, November the 17th, the Friday before Thanksgiving Day. And again, they're asking people to call in to reserve to make sure you're guaranteed a meal. That number, they have it open right now, 317 317- Six three six seven nine eight five. You can call anytime between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. between now and November the 17th. They will then open up the phone line again on Thanksgiving morning between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. But they're asking people if you can go ahead and call and order your Thanksgiving meal, they will be able to plan ahead and guarantee meals for those folks. As far as volunteers, Beth, so many people step up every year. They already have just about enough volunteers for Thanksgiving Day where they make those meals at Butler and they'll have 52 different satellite locations this year. But they still need volunteers for the day before Thanksgiving for setup and the day after for cleanup. So we will have all that information on our RTV6 mobile app later on today and on the IndyChannel.com. Reporting live from the West Side, Julie Persley, RTV6. Such a great effort. Julie, thank you so much. Beginning to heal after tragedy in Texas, the vice president traveling to Sutherland Springs today to comfort those who lost so much. The Brown County battlegrounds, protesters pitching tents to save trees. We'll explain next. And sure, you've seen a cat rescue or two, but how about a deer? This little guy stuck under a truck. We'll show you the video. And lots of sunshine this afternoon across central Indiana. Beautiful picture in Bloomington with just a few fair weather clouds out there. We'll enjoy the sunshine, but also some very chilly air heading our way in the coming days. It's all coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. You're watching the RTV 6 News at Noon. From the station working for you, this is RTV 6 News at Noon. Ahead of his visit to Indiana tomorrow, Vice President Mike Pence is in Sutherland Springs, Texas today. He's expected to meet with victims and families from Sunday's church shooting. Federal officials are now looking into why the gunman's violent background was never reported to authorities. ABC's Daniel Backus has the latest. First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas is still a crime scene. For four days, authorities have been processing evidence, but the FBI says they've reached a roadblock. They can't unlock the murderer's encrypted smartphone, which could hold key information. I can assure you that we're working very hard to get into the phone, and that will continue until we find an answer. Wednesday. Why? Why? New questions of how Devin Kelly was able to purchase guns despite his violent background. When they found the body, she was holding Brooke in her arms. Sandy Ward lost her two grandchildren, seven-year-old Emily and five-year-old Brooke and her daughter-in-law Joanne. Her grandson, Ryland, was shot five times. Her granddaughter, Rihanna, managed to survive unharmed. She looked at the gunman in the eye and he fired at her and it knocked her glasses off her face. Not a scratch on her, thank God. A newly released police report shows Devin Kelly was even more unstable and potentially dangerous than we knew. Saying he escaped from a New Mexico mental health facility in June of 2012, temporarily committed, thought to be a danger to himself and others. 
The report noting Kelly had been caught sneaking firearms onto Holloman Air Force Base and was attempting to carry out death threats made on his military chain of command. Churches in the southern Texas area now saying they will increase security in the aftermath of the shooting, with one pastor saying he plans on carrying a gun during services. Donya Backus, ABC News, Sutherland Springs, Texas. And this midday, we now know when the vice president will be back home again in Indiana tomorrow. We're told that Pence will be joined by Secretary of Labor Alexander Acosta and Governor Eric Holcomb. At 515 tomorrow, they'll hold a tax reform roundtable at the TKO Graphics in Plainfield. Pence will then speak to people in attendance there. And we'll have live coverage of the vice president's visit on RTV6, the app, and also the RTV6 Facebook page. A rescue more dangerous than it looks. The new video posted today of a deputy's unlikely encounter with a deer. You're watching RTV6 News at Noon. So much more than health insurance. Today, people who knew Cassie Braun are mourning a huge loss. The young woman, who was a native of Fishers, died tragically while taking part in a semester at sea program. Her family says Cassie died during a fall while on an independent travel trip in Myanmar. She was a graduate of Cathedral High School and was studying at St. Edwards University in Texas. Cassie's parents say they are devastated by the news, but they also want everyone to know that Cassie was having the time of her life while traveling overseas. The battle continues today to stop the sale of trees from a central Indiana tourist area. People are camping out at the Yellowwood State Forest in Brown County in protest of that sale. The state is planning to auction off logging rights to nearly 300 acres in the forest this week. The group is asking supporters to call on Governor Holcomb to stop the sale. The governor tells us he has not made a final decision. Hey, take a look at this from our Storm Team 6 forecast. Sunshine, finally, right for you here on this midday of Wednesday. Tell you what, we all want to see a little bit of sunshine, but it's deceiving because it's still pretty chilly out there. Yeah, you know, it's not bad, though, for this time of year. A little bit below normal. It'll be really deceiving come Friday. That okay. is the day that the big chill is going to <laughs> settle in. So enjoy the sunshine today and temperatures eventually. They should climb into the low 50s in many locations. Here's a live look in Carmel as you look past the Palladium there, and it's going to be nice to get out there along the Monon or the B-Line down in Bloomington at some points here throughout the afternoon hours. You'll have to just bundle up a little bit. But look at this, 49 now in Indianapolis as well as Muncie. 50 in Bloomington, 49 is the current temperature in Greenwood. I want to start off with the big picture here because you see the chilly air that's off to our new northwest. 34 in Minneapolis, 24 in Bismarck. That cold air is going to be coming into central Indiana, at least a piece of it, as we get towards the tail end of the week. So at least for today, Today and tomorrow and into Friday, it's a sunny stretch of weather. We'll be categorizing it as very cold overnight periods with temperatures at or below freezing. Uh, but during the day, with the exception of maybe Friday, it's going to be fairly pleasant as temperatures will climb up into the 50s tomorrow as well. A little more in the way of cloud cover down to the south. These are just some high thin clouds. Overall, high pressure is building in. That's helping to keep the winds down throughout the course of the day today. Yesterday was pretty breezy with the cloud cover. So today we've traded that for sunshine and light winds. And as a result, temperatures today will hover right around the 49, 50 degree mark throughout the afternoon hours with the sunny skies. But just know once the sun sets, which is early now this time of year, uh, shortly after 530, temperatures are going to cool off very, very quickly. Anytime after 8 o'clock, like we will be back down into the 30s and then come tomorrow morning when you wake up, temperatures will be hovering right around the freezing mark in most locations, maybe a degree or two above or below, depending on where you are. But definitely going to need the heavier coat tomorrow morning, but we'll rebound nicely just like we did today with plenty of sunshine and high temperatures tomorrow. Once again, climb up to right around the 50 degree mark across